project come up get our transport controls all happening as well as our MIDI controls so come across here and we will set up on the ruler minutes and seconds as well as tempo and we will want to see the inserts for the tracks that we insert as well as input outputs and create an instrument I'll just select the grid our smart tools and also I want this um, link timeline and edit selection activated this is really useful when we select a region and we're able to make it loop. So I'll create a new track, an instrument track, and we'll keep it as ticks when it comes up there. And we're away. We're going to do some drum machine programming, so I'll choose the instrument, boom stereo. Check we've got some sound. Yeah, that's pretty good. But uh, I might just choose a different drum machine -y sound. Let's hear what that's like. That's fine. I need a simpler drum pattern, so I'll clear the pattern. I want a very exposed kick and snare. I want a hi-hat in there, a closed hi-hat, and a crash cymbal. I'll have a listen to it. That's fantastic. However, I actually have to activate that within the um, as a sequenced track rather than just pressing play here if I'm going to bounce it to disk and turn it into a wave loop. So this number here C3 is activated by pressing on this key. You can hear that it loops so I draw in the note but it's very short and here it stops so it needs to be sustained longer. So we'll draw it out at the moment though it's going a little bit too long so I'll just drag that back. I should have mentioned here I've got this editor with the grid mode and it is snapping to semi quavers over here. Taking it back a little bit and then it's looping quite well. I'll set it up with the loop function now. I'll hold down the control key, press play and that sounds perfect. I'll just stop it. I'm now going to bounce this to disk. So I'll go File, Bounce to Disk. Because it's all selected, it should work fairly straightforwardly. I'll keep it as 16 bit depth and interleaved wave file. I'll give it a name Boom Drum. And away we go. Now I've finished with the, the boom tracks at the moment so I'll just close all that down so I can see things a bit clearer. I'm now going to open up a browser so the project browser window project and we want to find the folder that uh, contains the project that I've just been working on so I'll do a little bit of navigation. Now it's a matter of locating the audio files I've just created so I've drilled down into the folder containing the project and I'm looking for the audio files section where I loaded the sound. I turn on the elastic audio, click on the preview button and boom drum wave and there it is. Now I'm going to drag that into the project and because I've got the elastic audio activated it's going to automatically create a track and this time around I don't want to be importing the tempo, it's already the same tempo as this. And I'll just drag that back to the start. I can zoom in a bit more so I can see the one bar pattern. You can see it located there. And I can now go through the process of looping it, region loop, and maybe have it twice just so that we can prove that it works. And also demonstrate that it is a loop. And it all came through quite nicely. I'll mute that track, the original. This is our loop here, and we'll just change the tempo, put in another tempo marker. Maybe we'll do it at location bar 2, just make it go a bit quicker. 30. And there we go, it lines up nicely. You can see that. And we'll just take it back, select the region, and press play. Okay.
I'll now get rid of that tempo change because we really don't need it. Just press delete. Also, I want to remove the loop, so I'll go to the unloop button and just say remove. And that's our original loop back again. I'm now going to cut up this loop and actually transform it into a far more complex pattern. So the first steps for that is to create several new audio tracks. I know I've got a kick drum, snare drum, hi-hat, and a crash cymbal. So I want four tracks. So I'll go to track, new, create four new audio tracks. We'll go with stereo just because we can. Instrument, uh, we want audio track. Yep. And we want four of them. I'm now going to cut up this section. So using quavers, so I know my subdivisions approximately quavers, I can keep the snap on and I'm in the grid mode. So therefore, I should just be able to click and it will automatically snap to the correct positions, particularly as I have elastic audio. There's a little shortcut here, which is we use for separating, if I have this selected, of course. That's that. And edit, separate region at the selection point. So edit, select, separate region at selection. And there's a shortcut, Command-D. E. So I'll do that, Command-D, e, and just cut them up so that they're the right lengths of quavers. And that's our crash symbol there. Now if I play that sample through, it will still sound the same. And I've got that activated, so I muted that track. That's fantastic. You notice I've got the loop on up here, so it cycles on. I'm now going to rearrange this into a kick drum and snare pattern. So I'll type kick in here. And this one here, I'll go down to Next track will be snare. Next track down will be hi hat. Next one will be uh, crash. So I'll drag those tracks in. I want the kick up here. Now, if I hold down the option key as I drag, maybe, <laughs> try that again hold the option key before I drag, it actually just copies it. Now I want it on the first and third beat. We'll make a very simple drum pattern on the one and four. And also the hi-hats, we'll bring that in here. Now in this case here, I'm just going to repeat them. So I've got that region selected and I'll just go region. And no, I'll use this repeat function here number of repeats I want is seven counting the original and it fills it up nicely and I might just put in a crash symbol no maybe I won't let's listen to what it sounds like first and I want that one there so I'll just drag it back there and we press play I need to mute that first and we've got those happening I want the I hat to be a little bit louder that sounds pretty good as a starting point that's a good start I might just create another pattern as well and I'll just drag that across to here and put it on the next bar just because we can and I'll make this one start with a crash symbol and just to get absolutely complex copy this again uh, maybe. I'll copy this one here. Yeah, I'll just copy that over to here. And instead of having a very simple pattern, we might put in an extra kick drum beat, like so. And we might put in another little snare beat here. I'll drag that one over. Change its snap value to. 16th notes so we get a little bit more of a and a little bit more of a jump in it split that track there and we might change these hi-hats so that they become 16th notes in exactly the same fashion so select 
those, delete them, select that track there, and I'll repeat that one 16 times. Is that 15 times if I count the original? And let's just have a listen to what it sounds like. Again, I'll just drag that back so that we've got an even pattern. Let's now bounce this to disk. So I'll select the new pattern. I've just got that one pattern selected. I can press play. So I must be careful that I've got the other tracks muted. I'm happy with that. I'll bounce that to disk and I'll have to give it a name. So we'll just go with eights. We're going with 16, 44, interleaved. If you're not sure, it's just here, mono sun and the wave file. And we'll go with drums eighths. And the eighths is just the quaver pulse of the hi-hats. We're now going to bring back in the loops we've created. And our main aim has been to start with a simple loop, in this case the loop down here, and then create more complex loops out of it and then make it musically effective within a composition. Um, I've silenced all of those tracks or muted them. I'm now going to open up the browser, project browser. My audio files are contained within the loops project, so I'll go into instrument loops and I think I've put them in the audio files here. We can preview the sounds by clicking on them. And whatever tempo I've got up here, 120, that becomes the tempo of the loop that we're listening to. Good. I'll just bring those into the project. Like so they'll go nicely onto their own track. The elastic audio is all activated. I'm now going to arrange this so that it sounds more interesting. So I'll get rid of that one. Let's rearrange the track. And I do want my original loop back, so I'll just have to find where I've put that. There it is. And I want the original loop. Boom drum wave. Got to bring that back. So I'll bring that back in down here. And I'll just bring that across. Now, those two also need to come across. Three need to come across. I'm now going to loop each of them several times. And so I'll need to go into the region, loop, and we'll just go twice. Then I'll drag this one over to here, oh, the 16th, so I'll save that one for a little bit later. We want the eight, we'll start with the crash eights. And then I'll put that one in there, and then we'll go with the 16th. So this goes for all of and 10 seconds. to prove that they really are elastic audios, let's just change the tempo here. And we'll make it 150. And all the loops look like they've snapped nicely. Simple loop, a bit more complex. And we can complex. repeat this process using different instruments, in this case here the vacuum. We can insert notes etc. Again we're looking for a pattern that we can cut up into smaller, more useful sections. We can play it back, having it looped. And then we can go through the process of bouncing it again to disk.